12 years in office, World War II and the Great Depression demanded a unique and iconic memorial for President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. In August of 1955, Congress established a commission to raise funds for a memorial dedicated to FDR. The memorial is centrally located on a 7.5 acre plot of land between the Lincoln and Jefferson Memorial on the Tidal Basin. While funds were being raised, the search began for the designer of the project. Competitions would be held for 10 years before the search was over. The designer chosen to lead the project was Lauren Hawkins. Altogether, there were five artists selected to depict scenes or people that were part of President Roosevelt's life. Mr. Hopkins was known for his environmental designs in public and private gardens. Additionally, Mr. Hopkins included several pivotal events in Roosevelt's life to incorporate in this memorial. He honored each of the President's terms and historical events by designing rooms for each one. Room 1 contains an element used throughout the entire memorial, bronze. For the first sculpture in the room, artist Thomas Hardy designed the President's seal, made from high-relief bronze. Another feature in Room 1 is the work by Robert Graham. It's titled the first inaugural because Roosevelt is shown waving from his car after being sworn into office. Room 2 holds three amazing pieces that show the sadness and despair brought on by the Great Depression. The first piece is a work by George Siegel called The Red Line, which contains five men standing in line waiting to receive their bread rations. The faces of the men depict the stress and worry that many Americans were feeling. The second sculpture is called The Rural Couple, which portrays a man standing next to a woman sitting in a chair. Both of them are solemnly looking down. The last piece is called The Fireside Chat. This shows a man listening to a radio broadcasting one of the president's famous speeches. The last bronze piece in room two is entitled Social Programs and is depicted on series of panels. Here the visitor can learn about the 54 initial programs that were set in place during President Roosevelt's time in office. Standing in front of these panels is a sculpture that stirred up much controversy. As a child, the president battled the disease polio. While he survived this battle, he was left paralyzed to a wheelchair. Many people thought this was important to be recognized because a large part of his life was spent overcoming the challenge. However, some thought that if they showed him in his wheelchair, people would think that he was weaker than he truly was. Eventually, the difficult decision was made to include this sculpture. Room 3 is the largest of all the rooms. On the back side of this room is a massive waterfall. Water crashes onto boulders representing the violence and destruction of World War II. The tragic event took place during FDR's third term in office. Also in this room is a sculpture by Neil Easton located in the front of the waterfall. This piece brings in a friend of FDR's named Fala, his trusty dog that is standing right by his side. One of the key features of the sculpture is the look on the president's face. Roosevelt is calm and collected, even though the waterfall's power and destruction surrounds him. The last room is dedicated to President Roosevelt's passing. A 30-foot brass relief sculpture is created by Leonard Baskin. It's called Funeral Cordage. It is his buyer on a horse-drawn caisson, followed by people in mourning. Another significant piece in this room is a sculpture by Easton, depicting Eleanor Roosevelt standing in front of a calm waterfall. This represents the peace after World War II. Water is a significant piece in this memorial. The waterfalls hold different meanings. One of the waterfalls is used to depict the violence of World War II, and one is used to show the peace after World War II. The memorial itself is on the tidal basin for added beauty. The water was also incorporated because FDR loved being in and near the water. He grew up close to the Hudson River and was in the Navy before he became president. This memorial honors a man who guided this country through many historical tragedies. Even through it all, he remained calm and steady. This memorial encompasses all that took place and the emotions from each event. A great memorial befitting a great president.